Welcome back to the FM Garage, where in this episode of the Stage 1 Turbo Kit installation series, we will cover how to install the intercooler, the intercooler hoses, and the lower radiator hose. The first step, as always, is preparation. So in this episode, before we throw anything on the car, we need to prepare our intercooler so that way it's ready to go. First step, um, this intercooler is a very high quality unit. However, in any case with any intercooler, it's always a good idea to make sure that it's cleaned out before you use it. So on this particular one, um, it's easy enough simply to pull off one of the caps and pour in some mineral spirits. Once you've done that, cover it back up. Make sure that if you have any ports, if this is an intercooler equipped with any bungs, that you have them plugged or have something in there to block them off. Tape works fine. And then swish that mineral spirits around in there to make sure that if there is any, um, any kind of debris that's in there from cutting or welding, that then you can make sure it all comes out. You don't want that to be ingested by your engine, so make sure it's clean before you do anything and get started there. So once that's been done, and you let your intercooler dry out, uh, Mineral Spirits is a great solvent. Uh, after a few minutes, it should be fully dry. Then at that point, if you do have any bungs that have not been um, actually plugged, more than just one of these little rubber red plugs, that's not gonna hold up for boost, you want to either put a bung plug in them, which are provided with the kit if your intercooler does have a threaded bung, that you can simply thread them in after you've installed, or after you've applied a little bit of thread paste, like what you can see here. These are NPT bungs. So I'm just gonna run it down till it's about finger tight. And then at this point, I'm going to add about one and a half to three turns until I feel it nice, get nice and snug. So that's good right there. Now on this side, I've already have the bung installed. So as long as you've got your ports plugged off, you're good to go there. Now the next step that we're gonna do is we are going to mount the brackets. So on the top of the intercooler and on the bottom, but we're gonna use only the top bungs. We have some threaded bungs here that we will use to attach this horizontal bracket, as well as these vertical brackets, which attach to the horizontal bracket. This horizontal bracket has our name etched in it, and then also, of course, the with and without AC for each one of the mounting holes, depending on if your car has or does not have AC. Now, when you position this bracket on your intercooler, we're gonna say for this car that we're gonna keep the FM lettering displayed on the front of the intercooler. And then as far as this bracket being oriented on the top of the intercooler, you want it to where the lettering can all be read from the front of the car. So it should be obvious that when you're setting this up as if you were about to set it in the front of the car and you're right in front of the car ready to go in, you should still be able to read all of the letters. So make sure that it's this way around because if you have it this way around, you'll likely run into some issues fitting this up in the car because the AC components are on one side and not the other. Now, on NAs, you'll have brackets like this. They have a slight bend in them about here. Um, and whichever side you want mounted towards the face of the car, you know, the front, like in this case, we're gonna have FM displayed out of the mouth of the car. On NAs, you wanna have these brackets to where the back side of them is towards the back of the car. On NBs, it's actually flipped around. You want it to where if you were to look at it from the front, you wouldn't be able to see the bolt and the nuts that are attaching this vertical bracket to the horizontal bracket. And this is just due to the, the shape of the radiator core support where these are gonna attach um, right in front of the radiator and the AC condenser if so equipped. So what we're gonna do here is get this one attached. Um, it's easier to start off by taking your horizontal bracket and your vertical brackets and getting these put together loosely first. So as I mentioned with an NB, we're gonna have it to where these brackets are like this. So with our hardware over here, we've got two longer bolts, two shorter bolts, two lock nuts, and then four washers. So 
The short bolts are going to be for the intercooler to attach the horizontal bracket to the intercooler itself. So we want the long bolts here. So I'm going to take a washer, a nut, and a bolt here. And then I'm simply going to thread our bolt up from the bottom, add a washer on top, and then add a lock nut. And then I'm also going to do this on the other side. Again, choosing the with AC for this option. So longer of the bolts up through the bottom, washer and lock nut. Okay. Now you don't have to worry about getting these super tight right now while we're holding it. We just want them in place. So that way we can get everything installed and we don't have to fight quite as much. So now that we have these loosely installed, I'm going to place this over the top of the intercooler. And then I'll take one of the washers and one of the shorter bolts and thread this down into the bungs on the top of the intercooler. Now, if you get these mixed up and you thread the longer bolts in here, they simply will bottom out before it gets um, tight enough to actually hold the bracket in place. So it'll be pretty obvious if you get the bolts switched up and backwards. All right, I've got everything in position. Now, all I need to do is tighten up the hardware. So all of these nuts and bolts are 13 millimeter head bolts and nuts. So it's pretty easy. Just take a couple of 13 millimeter wrenches and tighten them up. And then I can just use one of the wrenches to hold the head of the bolt on the bottom. And then the other one to tighten up the nut from the top. And before you tighten it all the way down, you want to make sure that your bracket is as perpendicular as possible, horizontal to vertical, and that it's not rotating around on you. So make sure that you get them lined up. You can readjust if you need to, but basically you'll want to make sure that they're towards the front or towards the back, NA or NB. You don't want them towards the side in either case. All right, now we need to test this intercooler fitment in the mouth of the car. So we've got our brackets installed and then we have the under tray piece removed right here, the plastic. If you haven't, make sure you get that out of the way now. And then all we're doing here is I'm gonna test fit this up in the mouth of the car to see what kind of clearance we have or don't have. All right, so. I'm getting pretty close there. That's about as high as I can lift it before it really starts getting hard contact. You can see here, this car is equipped with power steering and this is a power steering fluid cooler line and it's contacting our vertical braces. So that'll have to be moved out of the way. And you can just kind of see it out of the corner here. Move my hand. Uh, right above the mounting bolt for this flange is the horn and pretty shortly that's going to be in the way once we move those power steering lines too. So let's address both of those issues. Um, on some cars, like this one that's equipped with AC, you can see that there are a few lines that are crossing back and forth. This guy and then this guy over here. So usually you can get away without having to do anything to these lines because they're far enough back that you won't have to worry about them. Um, if it helps or if they are something that are just a little bit in the way for you, um, you can bend these if you're very careful. They are aluminum, so if you need to bend them back a little bit, um, just be very mindful that these lines, because they're aluminum, they will very easily pinch at these corners where they've already been bent at the factory. So if you push them too much, like especially on this one right here, if you push too much on this trying to move this back, you may actually pinch that line shut and that'll ruin the line and it also will render your AC system useless. These next few steps may not be necessary for everyone, but we're gonna go ahead and talk about them just in case you do have either uh, power steering um, or possibly a horn that's in the way of fitting up your intercooler. So in this case, this is a stock horn and this is the stock bracket that it was attached to this just hangs down in the car right in front of the condenser. So there are many different ways to skin this cat. 
Uh, one of them, you can simply relocate this, take this bracket out, mount this up higher. You can bend the bracket. Um, NA brackets look a little different. So, I mean, there's, there's a few different things that you may need to do to make it work for you. Um, in this particular case, I simply chopped off part of the, the wall section of that bracket. So instead of mounting like this, I can just turn this horn off to the side and that'll give this enough clearance. So simple thing, if you've got uh, a few fabrication tools, you can do something like this or you can, you can do it as basic and as easy as you want. So let's take a look at the power steering lines on this particular car. Now, this is a 2002 Miata and it has power steering as we had shown you before. So this line right here hangs down quite a bit um, and this does interfere with our um, intercooler being right there where we want it in the nose of the car. So on the back side of the bumper bar here where it's attached, it has two little um, kind of P-style clamps that have little rubber isolators and then a bolt that holds them to this bumper bar on the back side. Now I've already removed this one just to make it easy to see everything. On this one, it's only in just hand tight. What I've done here is I've taken off the bracket and the little rubber isolator that's there. And once you loosen or take off the screws on both sides, you can actually take this line and push it up pretty much right here, snug up underneath this sensor. This is a crash sensor. And so, um, once it's up about this position and you know basically hugging the bottom of that sensor it's going to be out of the way for your intercooler so at this point all i'm going to do is take that isolator that was up top here and instead of having it on top i'm going to fit it on the bottom and then i've taken the the p clamp i bent it open that way i could get it off um, a big wide flat blade screwdriver does that job pretty well uh, or maybe a pair of um, stubby nose pliers but now I'm going to fit this back over on the bottom side of this loop over here on the passenger side and use it to bolt into the factory location here and now that I have that flipped up like that see how my lines are real tight there underneath that sensor now they're out of the way and I can get our intercooler in here just fine. And then I can rebolt our horn back into place. This is just the, the wire for the horn to power it. Um, you can do this a number of ways. This is really just the, the easy way to be able to move that out for NBs. NAs are similar, but they're a little bit different, of course, the way that they are actually routed. But however works best for your particular car, do it. All we're looking is to gain clearance here, so make it happen however works best for your car. Now that we've made some clearance for an intercooler, we're ready to offer it up, hopefully for the last time, into the mouth of the car. So we have our room, and now we need to undo the bolts here that attach this latch to the radiator core support. Now on NAs and NBs, they're pretty much all the same looking. They may look, you know, small, small differences, but you will always have the two bolts here on the left and the right hand side that are attaching that to the radiator core support. Now these guys um, oftentimes on the front they'll look fine but if you look at them from the back you know underneath the car they'll be rusty. So check yours make sure they're not rusty. Spray them with some penetrating oil if they are to make sure that you don't break them off. That's always a bad time. But at this point we're just going to undo these so that way this can move around because these two bolt hole locations are where our intercooler vertical mounts are actually going to bolt up. Now once you get these guys out of here, this will flop around a little bit, so be careful. Alright, but now, see I've got enough room that I can bend this back just a little bit. I'll be able to fit those brackets between this and the core support. Okay, so here we are with our intercooler. And again, we've got FM that we're gonna have facing forward on an NB, so I've got the brackets with the, basically the face side of them 
forward instead of where on the NAs you'll see the nuts and bolts. And make sure you have it on the appropriate locations here. And I'm going to carefully push this up into place. Now that we have the intercooler in position and you can see our two vertical brackets are poking up between the latch and the radiator core support. Now we just need to put these factory bolts back in. These are 10 millimeter, so simply thread them back through. Helps to get one side started. Don't put it, uh, don't tighten it all the way so that way you still have a little bit of wiggle room to be able to get the second one going. Okay, now we've got both of these started. So if you need to make sure that your intercooler is positioned properly down here in the mouth of the car, that way our bracket is sitting in the same position that it was before we started. Um, there's a little bit of adjustment. So if in question here, stop um, before you have everything all the way tightened down and try shutting your hood and just make sure that you still can shut it, that it will latch and that the D-ring will fall here into the slot as it normally should. Once your alignment is all good, then you can tighten down these bolts for good and you're done with mounting the intercooler. We're ready to install our lower radiator hose. This is the one piece silicone guide that's gonna replace the factory rubber hose or hoses for some of the NAs. So. This piece is intentionally long on both ends. That way you can trim it to fit your particular car. The reason we do this is that every setup is gonna be a little bit different. Some with or without AC or power steering, NA to NB, they're all a little bit different for the routing. So there isn't one perfect hose to fit them all. So a little bit long is what we're needing. Um, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and test fit this hose in the car, just to show you some of the fitment challenges that we'll be up against then we'll trim it down and we'll secure it for good. A really helpful tip or trick, I guess, to be able to help you fit this silicone hose in because in this case, we're dealing with AC and power steering. Um, there's other lines in the way and this can be kind of a tight fit is to use Simple Green or some other kind of water-based soap. And all that we're doing here is we're just lubricating this hose a little bit and doesn't have to get crazy, but just a little bit of water-based soap like this will allow us to easily fit this and try different positions in the engine bay. So we're just aiming for getting this past the air conditioning pump like that. And then you can see that this is the outlet of the radiator. And this is where the other end of the hose is gonna go, of course. You can see that we're obviously gonna need to trim this end but right now I'm focusing on the end on the engine block because we want to get that end pretty much as tight up against the AC compressor as we can. So right now I can see that it really is going to need quite a bit of a trim. So here what we're going to do is get it in position and make a little bit of an educated guess for how much we need to trim off. So we're going to trim this off and take another stab at it, see if we can get it to fit up correctly. Here's a little helpful trick for when you're cutting silicone hose. Um, anytime you've got a large hose like this that you're using a hose clamp and you can't just use scissors or some kind of a, um, a dike or something like that to cut it, then a trick to be able to do that and get a nice clean cut is to use a hose clamp. So you mark out how much you wanna cut off and then you line up your hose clamp right where you want it on that mark and then tighten it down just enough so that way it's tight on your hose. And once you've got your hose clamp lined up where you like it, then you simply take a fresh blade. Don't try this with a dull blade because you're still going to end up with a crappy finish. So use a fresh blade and then simply place it alongside the clamp and you can follow that edge of the hose clamp all the way around for a nice clean cut.
You know, you want to do this with a hose clamp that doesn't have a really big worm gear or any kind of mechanism. Um, if you do it with some of the larger ones like this, you're going to have stuff that kind of hangs off the side that gets in your way. But even on these ones, the smaller worm gear style clamps, you likely are going to need to stop a little bit short. And either you can be really, really careful here, or I like to cut up to them, stop, come up on the other side, cut up to them, take the clamp off and finish the cut just by hand. So on this one, I'm going to trim it up to the clamp there, just like that. All right, so now I just have a little section left to go. So I'm just going to carefully cut this by hand and eyeball it straight across since it's only a short little section. There you go. So what you're left with is a fairly clean cut. Now, of course, this probably takes a couple of times to get it right to where it's actually a really, really nice clean cut and a larger blade than what I used does help too. But at least this gives you a fighting chance to where you're not left with a really raggedy cut instead. So the more that you can mark down and get it right beforehand and then do your cut, the nicer it's going to be. Our hose is now trimmed up and ready to go. So in this particular case, I've actually had to trim more off of the top of the question mark or the shepherd's cane than on the bottom. So as I mentioned before, this will vary depending on your car, depending on if you've got AC, AC uh, power steering. So um, don't take this as how this is, your, is supposed to be shaped. Yours may be different. So now that I've got the shape that I liked, I've test fitted it a few times to make sure it all fits. I'm going to first attach the end that goes on the engine for the water pump inlet side. And before I do so, I'm going to preload a clamp on it. But actually, instead of putting on this, I'm going to put it on the inlet for the water pump. So now I don't have to wiggle that clamp up in there as I'm fighting the hose. And now for a final time, I'm going to take my simple green or again, any other kind of water-based soap or lubricant, silicone spray works too. This dries pretty quickly and just makes it a little bit easier to get it all in there. So in this particular scenario, what I've been doing is just feeding it up past the AC compressor, reach through with my other hand and grab it from the backside and then pull it around into position and then over the snout of that inlet. Okay, so now I've got it over the inlet for the water pump. Now in this car, it has AC. I've actually had to bend this line a little bit. There's a bracket here as well that I've removed. You may not have to do that. Every car is a little different. If you need to do something like that, a little bend of bending is okay. Don't go crazy. These are high pressure lines and if you break them, yeah, you'll be in for a bad time. So now that I have the top end up, I'm also going to position the bottom end. And for this car, the best routing ends up being that I'm actually going to go on the inside of this power steering line. And then before I attach the radiator into the hose, I'm going to put my hose clamp on here. And then I'm going to push then this end up into position. All right. So now I need to put my hose clamp on, tighten it up here on the bottom as well. I'm going to do this one first and then we'll lower the car down and get the other one from the top. Now these constant torque hose clamps have a eight millimeter head on them. And you can't use the factory pinch clamps here. You have to use these constant torque guys. Reason being is that this silicone hose is actually a slightly larger outer diameter compared to the factory rubber hose. And so those factory pinch clamps just don't work. Now you can see here, I'm actually fighting the power steering lines going up to the front of the car. This only shows like this on the NBs, NAs are a little different. So I'm just going to spray 
little bit of simple green here. That way I can slide this clamp into position a little bit easier. Now that the lower radiator hose is in place and we've got the clamp on the radiator side all tightened up, we need to get the side on the engine tightened up. So I've got it flipped around here to where you can see the head of that clamp on the lower radiator hose just behind those coolant lines here. And all I'm gonna do is use a long extension with an eight millimeter socket at the end and just reach through from the top and start tightening this down. Now, I've got it positioned, it's hard to see in the video, but I have this clamp positioned right behind the kind of the bulb or the, the flared portion of that inlet um, from the, the water pump piece. So you want this clamp to be just right behind that bulb or that flare. And keeping your hose clamp positioned, that way you can reach it. That way if you need to access it later is always helpful. So try to keep it facing in a position that you can reach it later on. There we go. And just like that, that radiator hose is in place. So it's tight up against that AC compressor, as tight as I could get it. We're trying to get as much room as we can for the intercooler piping that'll be coming off the compressor housing down to the intercooler. So one thing to note here is that you're starting to notice if you've got a lot of accessories like AC and power steering that space is getting tight. It's all right, don't worry, we're gonna get to that. Basically, when we get to that point and we're able to make everything fit, it will be tight. It is part of the system if you don't have AC or if you don't have power steering, you're gonna have an easier time. But even with these accessories, we'll still be able to make it work. So let's go ahead and we'll start working on the intercooler piping next. The next step in this process is to install the compressor outlet hose. So this is the intercooler hose that goes from the turbo down to the intercooler. You can see that we already have these hose clamps. These are T-bolt style hose clamps. These are much better at clamping onto these style silicone hoses compared to like a worm style screw clamp. Now, this already has all the right bends in it to be able to fit where we want it to go in the chassis. It's also very flexible, of course, so installing it is much easier than using a bunch of hard pipes. So let's go ahead, we'll try taking a look at this just in position. We'll mock it up and then we'll get it installed. So shy of this being a little bit too high in the car, this is more or less the position that this hose is gonna be whenever we have it installed. We have this section down here that's gonna mate up to the intercooler. And then of course, following it up, this is gonna be the side that is mated to the compressor. Now you can see here, this compressor is pointed mostly down, but how you can see down here that it's actually pretty close to our power steering hose and then also our newly installed lower radiator hose. So in this particular instance, you can see with the hose also that it's not quite exactly down, maybe just a little bit pointed in towards the engine. So looking at the compressor, we need to actually clock this housing a little bit to give us some more room. We need to turn this counterclockwise just to turn that outlet a little bit more towards the driver's side. So this is a fairly straightforward process. All we need are some 13 millimeter wrenches to be able to get access to the six bolts that are here on the back side of the compressor housing. Now, these are bolts that we've already been, um, we've already had a couple of them off for this wastegate bracket. So you should already know the drill. We don't wanna loosen the bolts holding the compressor housing to the center section all the way. We just wanna loosen them a little bit. That way the compressor housing isn't able to rock at all. We just want them loose enough to be able to spin the housing. If you loosen them too much, you can actually cause contact between the housing and the impeller wheel and this can damage one or both of those components, uh, which could compromise the turbo, or at very least would affect the way that the turbo is able to build boost. So let's go ahead, we'll loosen up these bolts and we'll just rotate this housing a little bit to gain us a little bit more clearance for our compressor hose. Now these three are the easiest ones to get to. The other three on the bottom, you may need to reach up from underneath the compressor housing to be able to get access to them. Um, or you can use a combination of either slightly bent or stubby wrenches and or uh, sockets and ratchets to be able to get into them from the back side. 
Now that all six of our compressor housing bolts have been loosened up, I've also taken the wastegate actuator arm clip off so that way this arm isn't applying pressure towards the compressor housing. So now that that's been done, you can see that this compressor housing will turn. It will take a little bit of force to be able to turn it, but you can see that it does rotate. And also, of course, because the bolts are loose here, the actuator bracket moves on its own too. Now, the goal here is that we want this compressor outlet to be facing fairly well down maybe just a little bit in towards the engine. So you can see here, I'm not quite flush down here as far as 90 degrees perpendicular with the ground, maybe just a little bit in, you know, 10 degrees or so. This is more or less the angle we're looking for. So once we have this angle that we want, again, check to make sure all of the rest of your hoses are okay. Our water lines are still good. They're not pulled too tight. Uh, we have a little bit of clearance here for the power steering pump line and we also have clearance up against the lower radiator hose but once you get this in a position that you like for the compressor housing then at that point you also want to set your bracket i'm going to pull it back over here towards the the fender here and then we're going to reset this guy um, just like when we talked about assembling for the turbocharger and the wastegate actuator once you put this actuator arm back over the wastegate arm here, you wanna make sure that it's not contacting on the back side of the actuator, that you still have some wiggle that you're not making any hard contact between the rod and the housing. So we won't show you that again here, but just to note that if you do have to caulk your compressor housing, you should recheck all of this just to make sure that you have good, clean, no contact movement between these parts. So now go back through Tighten up all six of your bolts. This, this is aluminum, so don't go crazy, just snug. That's all we're looking for. But tighten this back up, that way we'll be ready to put the compressor outlet hose in place. I can tighten these guys and make sure they're tight too. Yep. All right. So I've got the top three tightened down just so that way it's in position. I have the wastegate actuator arm back on the turbocharger. So everything up here on the top is good. There's still three more bolts to do on the bottom side of the compressor housing. We're not gonna show that because it's really hard to show on camera and hard to reach at the same time. But make sure that you have all six of those tightened. And the next step is going to be installing the compressor outlet hose. So now that we have this all reoriented and we've got some clearance, we should be good to go with that hose installation. The intercooler is mounted up in the nose of the car and we've reclocked the compressor housing just to show you how to do it if you need to have it done. In most cases you don't need to go through that step. We already pre-clocked the turbos before they go out. But now that both of those have been done, we're ready to mount this intercooler pipe in the car to connect the turbocharger to the intercooler. So this smaller size, this two inch diameter end, goes on the compressor housing and then this end that's got kind of a, a bell mouth on it this is the side that connects to the intercooler. So in most cases, this is ready to go. Um, if you do need any more clearance, of course it is flexible, so you can make it work with most um, slight changes in every setup from NA to NB Miatas, even if you have accessories. Um, also, these guys are pretty much cut to the perfect length, although if you do need to trim off a little bit to gain you a little bit of clearance here, or possibly a little bit here, that's fine too but we recommend test fitting this up first and then cutting if necessary to gain a bit more clearance. So let's go ahead, we'll throw this in the car. Um, as with the lower radiator hose, a helpful thing to be able to get this position because space is tight, use a little bit of simple green um, or some other kind of uh, water-based soap just on the outside. We don't wanna get it in the, on the inside here because the inside you want it to be able to clamp securely around the compressor outlet. Um, so if you do need any help getting this lip over the compressor outlet, you can use a little bit of um, like hairspray or you can even use rubbing alcohol. Something that when um, you apply it, it's nice and wet and you can use that to help slide it over the compressor outlet. But it, once it dries up, it'll actually become a bit tacky and that'll help you get a little bit more grip on that compressor outlet. So I'm just gonna spray down the outside of the hose a little bit. And then we're going to put this in the car just by fitting it up from the bottom side. 
So well, what I'm going to do is just try to squeeze it between the other hoses right here. You can see how I've reclocked the housing. This is what it should look like. I've also twisted this power steering hose just a little bit. Normally it sits up a little bit more horizontal um, from the, the reservoir over here to the pump, but I've simply loosened the clamps and twisted that down to give me a little bit more clearance. So from the bottom side, I'm just going to position this hose and feed it through. There we are. So it'll take a little bit of doing. You'll have to kind of twist it a little bit to get it up into this position. But once you've got it past some of the other hoses and the control arm, then you can twist it back into the right orientation. And then the next trick is getting the mouth of that intercooler hose over the lip of that compressor housing. Now, of course, before you do that, don't forget your hose clamp. So this is one of the T-clamps. Uh, this one, if you're looking at it, it has the minimum diameter of 238 millimeters. So this is the correct one for that compressor outlet. Um, I've also gone ahead and taken out some of the, the available travel. That way I don't have to spend an hour um, in an awkward position trying to get it tight. So generally, I like to have it to where this bolt, once I've got the hose in position, is about here. This is usually the easiest position to get it tightened. You can have it however you like if you'd like to flip it around, if that makes it easier for you. It doesn't matter, as long as this is able to clamp onto the compressor housing once that hose is installed. So I'm just going to slip this down over the hose. Actually, let me pull that forward just a little bit. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna slip that over the hose in advance. And now I'm gonna position this hose up over the compressor housing. All right, so now I've got that hose all the way up over the compressor housing outlet. And it looks a little bit odd the way it's positioned simply because of the way that the machining is on that compressor outlet. But once I get the clamp down on it, it's gonna hold just fine. Uh, before I tighten this up though, I am gonna go ahead and attach the other end. So that way, if that hose has any kind of extra rotation in it, I get it lined up with the intercooler and then I'll tighten down those hose clamps. So looking here at the mouth of the car, you can see I've got Plenty of room here with the under tray removed to have our intercooler hose for this end coming up and around. And then of course, before I put this guy on here, I am going to add my hose clamp. So in this case, with this hose clamp, I'm actually going to position it to where the bolt is facing backwards because I can access it from the backside of the intercooler. Okay, so now we've got the intercooler hose attached to the inlet of the intercooler. And this, I did end up using a little bit of rubbing alcohol, so that way I could get it to slip over that inlet a little bit easier. So now I'm just gonna work my clamp, make sure it's on the inside, if I can show it, the inside of the, the bulge or the, the lip of that intercooler inlet. Make sure that the hose is on where you like it. And then, Tighten up this clamp. Now that we've got that compressor inlet hose routed where we'd like it, and it's attached to the intercooler side, we can come back up here and tighten up this hose clamp. So if you need to make any final adjustments here as far as rotation, you can do that now. Make sure that you've got it fully seated. Again, the angle looks a little odd, but it is actually fully seated onto the compressor housing. So you can tell on the inside, if that hose is touching, there's a, a bit of machine surface at the very bottom. If it's touching that edge on the machine surface, then that hose is fully seated as far as you can get it, and that's good. So from here, this is an 11 millimeter head, and I'm gonna pull it up over the top of that lip. 
There we go, right about there. And then I'm just gonna run it down. Now, these T-bolt clamps do have fairly fine threads. So if you're running them down with an impact or some kind of power tool like what I just used, be careful, don't go too fast, because you can actually melt the nylon in the knock nut. Um, these threads do get relatively hot if you run them down quickly. So just be careful. Um, I also tend to put just a little bit of grease on the threads. So that way, as you're running down the nut, you're helping to preserve the threads on the nut as well as the nylon. To complete the loop from the compressor through the intercooler to the throttle body, we have a few more intercooler hoses that need to be installed. So this is the intercooler outlet hose, and it has a two and a half inch inlet here that attaches to the intercooler outlet flange. Then at this side, there's just a silicone end that has a aluminum intercoupler, basically. This is the throttle body inlet hose, and this portion attaches to this aluminum two and a half inch insert, and then there's hose clamps that clamps onto it to hold it in place. But this throttle body inlet hose, you can see um, it is basically a 90 degree bend that has a few extra provisions. Now these are gonna be a little bit different for the different engine types. This is an NB specific model. There's also NA6 and NA8 variants that have provisions for the idle air control valves on those engines. Now they all have the 90 degree shape to them. They're all two and a half inch hoses and they all have a provision for a blow off valve right here. Uh, this particular model also has a bung or port for an intake air temperature sensor if you choose to use it. Um, not all of these will have this equipped. If yours doesn't, don't worry about it. The stage one kit doesn't need it. Because we won't be using it for this particular build, there's also a bung plug that's included. So we will install this plug into this port just to block it off. That way you don't have a huge boost leak. So as with all of the other threaded tapers that we've been using throughout this build, we will be using some thread paste to seal this off and put uh, just a little bit of insurance on here and then plugging this up. So before you put it in the car, do that now if you have this port on your throttle body inlet hose, because it's much easier to do it out of the car than it is in the car. We're gonna start by installing this part first, the intercooler outlet hose, just to get it in position. So I'm gonna feed it through up from the bottom through the wheel well, and then just leave this end of it kind of free floating in the engine bay, and then we'll get the throttle body inlet hose next. So this one, to position it, I'm gonna start by roughly feeding the top end of it through just to get it up past the sway bar like that. And then this one on NBs, I think actually NB2s, already have a, a, a cutout in the, in the splash guard. Um, NAs aren't gonna have this piece at all. Some of the NB1s don't have one, but this one, in our case, we don't need to do anything too terribly crazy just to get it lined up there. Now, before I put it on the outlet of the intercooler, I'm gonna take my hose clamp and I'm gonna slide it onto the end of the hose. And then I'm going to fit this all in place. There we go. And leave the clamp loose for right now because we'll want to get everything positioned correctly and then we'll tighten up all the clamps. Remember, if you have any trouble with getting the hose on the end of the intercooler there, you can use a bit of hairspray if you got some or even rubbing alcohol just to give it a bit of lubrication that it's gonna dry out and become a little sticky to help keep everything attached. Next to go on is the throttle body inlet hose. So grab the intercooler hose that you just routed up here. See how it's kind of hanging out just in front of the alternator. And I'm actually going to pull it up just a little bit. That way I can grab onto it. Um, space is going to be tight on the NBs. NAs have a little bit more room down here because there's not as much AC stuff and other things floating around. But add your hose clamps first. Remember that you need to have clearance to be able to tighten them and you don't want them to rub up against anything, especially not your belts or your pulleys here. So go ahead and get them on there and plan a little bit as far as how you want them to be attached once everything is together. And then thread the throttle body inlet hose down into place. And once you've got the two mated together on that aluminum insert, then you want to push 
the throttle body mouth down. Oh, don't forget your hose clamp again. And slide this over the mouth of the throttle body inlet. There we go. Now, NA owners, you will have a second hose, either the left or the right side of this for your idle air control valve. So don't forget about that one. It'll be a smaller guy that uh, has its own hose clamp. So you'll have an attachment there. And these, you don't need to worry about that. You're good to go. So now you can see here, space is pretty tight on this end, especially with the upper radiator hose. This car is equipped with our crossflow radiator. So you may need to either trim this hose a little bit shorter on this end to pull it forward. Um, you can also, if you have a little bit extra, like on this one, you actually have a little bit extra length here. Um, you can trim this up to bring this hose assembly closer to the engine if you need to. I think in this particular application for what we're looking at, um, I don't have any excessive pressure or points of rubbing or anything like that that I'm too concerned about. Um, I think I'll probably just rotate it a little bit like this to help clear the AC lines that are on this side and then that'll be good to go. So now that we've got everything attached loosely but none of the clamps are tight, I'm going to go through and start tightening up the hose clamps. Um, start with the intercooler first, just so that way you can make sure that everything down there is clocked and oriented properly. And then work your way up here. Make sure that the sleeve, that aluminum insert, is fully covered up by your silicone intake pieces. And put the clamps on either side of the bead on that insert. And then of course, lastly, you'll want to tighten up your hose clamp here for the throttle body, as well as the idle, idle air control valve, if so equipped on your engine. Okay, we're down here at the intercooler and I'm going to tighten up this hose clamp. If you need to do any fine adjustment for the rotation of this hose on the intercooler itself or up here in the engine bay as it goes around the, the coolers, go ahead and do that now. Once you're happy with the placement, go ahead and tighten down your hose clamp. Again, I've got this to where the threaded portion, the, the bolt side, is on the back. That way it doesn't show up through much on the front. And I'm just going to snip it down. All right, make sure if you have any AC components that are right there behind that clamp that they're not gonna rub. Or if they do, take a piece of slit hose and add it there on the back between the two. That way you don't accidentally rub through some aluminum AC components. Thirteen million quarter turns later. This hose clamp, because the throttle body, that section where basically the clamp, the factory clamp would have gone is so narrow, you pretty much have to have this clamp flush with the edge of the hose because the lip is right here. So we're clamping just on the very, very back side of that lip. So once you got it all lined up, run it down. There we go. And this is the last clamp that we've done. So I'm just gonna give it a visual look over to make sure all my connections look okay, that we're not hitting anything. Um, I'm happy with the position, so now the last thing that we're going to do, now that we have all of our intercooler piping installed, is go back through and any potential rub issue that you might have, um, like I've got a point down here on the fan where I think that I'm going to put a little bit of slit hose, um, and we're probably going to do a few pieces over on the compressor outlet side since there's quite a few things running past that hose, just to keep abrasion to a very, very minimum. Uh, and prevent anything from rubbing through the silicone intercooler pipes. So pieces of, of slit hose just like this um, doesn't have to be anything fancy as long as you're using it to protect and provide a barrier between your hose and any kind of metal object especially with sharp edges to prevent it from rubbing through. Next up is to install our TurboSmart blow-off valve. 
So these guys are included with the kit. We're actually going to use them as a bypass valve where it recirculates back to the intake instead of venting to atmosphere. This way the mass airflow sensor is not losing track of any of that air. So this is the best way to do it for our stage one kits. Now these guys, these are the compact version of the Turbo Smart Blow valves. Um, they do have interchangeable inlet and outlet. So make sure that when you take it out of the box, that if it's loose, that you just make sure to tighten them up, snug them both up, they're just threaded fittings. Included with these Turbo Smart blow off valves are some small hose clamps. Don't use those ones. Use the constant torque hose clamps that we have included with your kit. These guys are a 33 to 57 millimeter. You can see that stamped on the side of the band here. These are gonna do a lot better job of holding the boost. So this is gonna be the one here on the inlet to the blow off valve. This goes into our throttle body hose. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna orient this to where this blow off valve, the, the shorter or this, um, excuse me, the, uh, the narrower port here is facing down. And I've also gone ahead and clocked this hose barb. You can see that it rotates. So I'm gonna point it basically up compared to or, or 180 degrees compared to this outlet port here. But now this is gonna go on this port on your throttle body. And I'm gonna go ahead and install this hose clamp on here first, just to get it out of the way. And then this bypass valve just plugs in right there like that. And then tighten up your hose clamp once you're happy with the placement. And this has an eight millimeter head on the bolt. So an eight millimeter socket works great here with an extension to reach down to get it. And as you're tightening it, just make sure that the outlet is still pointing straight down. This will give us the best clearance for the recirculating hose that we will run back over to the intake. All right. So now I'll move this lower radiator hose and the wiring just a little bit so you can see. You can just see the top there and that little hose bar that I was spinning around you'll want to move it just a little bit because we'll actually have a vacuum hose routed from the intake down to that nipple. Um, but now it's in place. The next step for installing the air box and the compressor inlet hose going to the turbo is to remove this plastic piece and this other metal bracket here that was basically the base for the stock air box. So this has a few 10 millimeter bolts that need to be removed as well as these two bolts and nuts that hold on a couple of relays on the back of this plastic shield. So a couple of 10 millimeter ratchets and a couple of 10 millimeter bolts and we should be able to get these out. Now hold on to these because these will be reused. All right, so now the relay relays are free. So just set them down here off to the side. And now we're gonna take out these bolts that are attaching this bracket to the frame rail. All right, and these parts will not be reused, so you can take these out of the car, and this is done. All right, so now we get to talk about the inlet for the turbocharger and the air box. So here in front of me, I've got several of the components laid out for the intake, basically starting with the air filter, the compressor inlet hose, we have a blow-off valve or circulating hose. Then over here on this side, we have our air box and some of our factory sensors and then some miscellaneous hardware. So this air box, I've already applied the weather stripping all along the bottom, as well as the real squishy stuff along the top that'll help seal it to the hood. NA versus NB design will look a little different. The 1.6 liter cars do not have an air box because of the position of their air filter but the NA8s and the NBs do. So this air box, it comes with all the gaskets as just extra uh, lengths of it or complete lengths of it, and you then you trim it to fit. The smaller of the weather stripping or, or the trim piece along the bottom here that I've cut out, um, a lot of times you'll need to apply some super glue or some kind of silicone epoxy or something along those lines to help keep it in place. This will be pressed up against the inside of the fender well. So a lot of times that may not be necessary, but if you want it to fit nicely and not have any 
um, spots where it's coming off, then using a little bit of glue basically to hold it in place is a good idea. You can see here I actually have some tape to help hold it on in places as we let this epoxy cure. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and test fit this in the car to show you how it goes in. So along with this, it is also included a few bolts to be able to mount this air box. We've got a larger bolt here for this bottom section. And then on the inside, there's a small M6 bolt that'll go right here. So this guy, let's go ahead and we'll fit it in the car. And we'll see how this mounts. So we've cleared out this area right here the factory plastic guard that was there on the NB models. Uh, the NAs and NBs should have basically a metal mounting bracket down here that's held in with a couple of bolts and nuts. I've taken that out and this piece simply fits in place. And the bends on this may not be exactly perfect. You may need to open and close that bend here at this 90 degree and possibly at this bend here to get your bolt holes to line up but because it is a fairly thin metal, it shouldn't take too much flexing for it to get into the right position. So we have the M6 bolt that'll go in up top here and just thread that into place. And then the larger of the two bolts, this one threads in down here. Now that we've got the bolts started, just getting this air box in position here, I'm gonna tighten down the smaller one and the bigger one. Smaller one is a 10 millimeter. And then this larger one down here is a 13. Okay, so now we have the air box in position. Make sure that all of your wires that are coming here in front of the air box are not stuck underneath it. You should have a few here on the back side, of course, make sure that everything's clear. Now on NBs, um, you will have a little sensor port here in the back. Um, this stock sensor, this is an intake air temperature sensor, lives in the factory air box. And normally, it would be on the end of this harness, just plugged in. So you may need to pull it off your harness. You may also need to pull it out of your stock air box if you still had that in the air box itself. But it just has a little rubber grommet. So peel off the rubber grommet. Be very careful not to bend or really break the sensor. There we go. Just like that. Now this grommet, you can simply feed into the hole on the back side of the air box like that. It just snaps into place. You can use a little bit of silicone spray or a little bit of grease if you need to help you get it slotted in there just right. Then you take your sensor and simply plug it in just like that. So this is emulating the stock air box, um, but using the new air box included with the stage one turbo kit, of course. Now that we have our air box in here, the last thing we need to do is mount up our relays. So on NBs, we take these two relays and you can see down here, there's two holes. So these holes are simply just used to mount the two relays on the inside. If you have multiple relays um, or multiple sets of relays, you can mount two on the inside and then two on the outside to make this a little bit cleaner of an installation. We're going to mount these on the inside and plus the wires are a little bit easier to reach from this end. So we're going to reuse the same mounting nuts and bolts that they had on the factory plastic bracket and just slot the relay through or the bolt through the relay, excuse me, from this end. Same thing with this other one. And then I'm going to run them through on this side and then use the nuts on the outside. Using the nuts to hold the relays through on the front side of the air box, just like the factory one. All right, just like that, they're in place. And now we're ready to put in the silicone neck that comes in through here, mount the mass airflow sensor, and then the air filter. The first piece that we need to install after putting in the air box is gonna be our compressor inlet hose. So this hose comes with two hose clamps. One of them's a bit bigger than the other. 
should be a 52 to 76 millimeter is the small one and then a 59 to 83 millimeter is the larger of the two both are constant torque hose clamps so start with a smaller one this is going to be the side that goes over the compressor inlet and i usually install it in this orientation because this way i can access the clamp a little bit easier so i got the hose clamp just slid over the hose here now I'm going to lower it down and just slide it over the nose of that compressor inlet. There we go, just like that. And I'm going to rotate this just slightly. I'm basically trying to point this end up through the hole into the air box. There we go, about like that. So this hose clamp here, you can also access it pretty easily using an extension and a socket on a wrench. Now on all the 1.8 liter engines, you'll have your mass airflow sensor that shows an arrow to indicate which direction the airflow should be traveling. Now if you mount it backwards, you're likely going to have a bad time. It's not going to run right. So make sure that your arrow is pointed in as if you're following the airflow into the turbo and then into the engine. So NB models, this will actually mount in between the air box and this inlet hose. On NA8s, it'll actually mount on the inside of the airbox. So this guy, on this particular model, the NBs actually, you kind of have to do a bit of a squeeze. NAs, it's a little bit easier. Before you put this mass airflow sensor in, of course, you'll want to attach your hose clamp, or at least get it in position. So I'm gonna fit this over our silicone hose. There we go. And now, I'm going to squeeze your mass airflow sensor into position here. There we go. So I'll be very careful not to break any of the plastic lips on this. You need to flex the air box just a bit as well as flexing your intake hose just to get it in position here. And now once you have it in, you can finalize the position where you like it. And you can rotate this hose a little bit to give you the best placement and fitment with your air box. Now, if your compressor inlet hose doesn't quite line up with the hole in your air box here, and it's a little bit past, so you can trim the hose down on this side where it attaches to the compressor housing to give you a better fitment. So in this case, looks like we're doing all right. I think we're gonna leave this as is. This hose actually has a little bit of flex to it anyway, so we've got a little bit of room that we can kind of uh, flex it around as necessary to make it fit best. Now, I'm not going to worry about tightening up these hose clamps just yet. Before we go any further, I am going to attach the air filter. Now, the air filter that we use has a slightly angled inlet. So this is a 10 degree angle on this filter specific to our turbo kits. Now, this angle needs to be mounted like that Basically, that's giving us, trying to straighten out this um, upward curve that we have here just a little bit. I've got the hose clamp already on, and this just slides over the mouth of your mass airflow sensor. And this is pretty much the same process for NA8s and NBs. So be very careful, don't squish the, the filter element. But once we've got this in position, it's gonna look about like this. That angle helps to turn the air filter down so that way it's not popping up and hitting the hood. Now that we have all the components here for the air intake in position and everything's clocked correctly, let's go ahead and we can tighten down our hose clamps. So in this particular instance, these are all eight millimeter clamps and you don't need to go crazy on them. This hose won't see any boost. So we're just looking to get these tight to keep them from falling off. We're not looking to keep in any pressure. Now this last hose clamp down here on the compressor housing is the one that's a little bit tricky. This is generally the orientation that I find works best. I get it pretty much as snug up against the compressor housing as I can. But again, these aren't hoses that are gonna see any kind of boost. So we're just looking to get them snug so that way the hose doesn't fall off. Okay, just like that. By now you're probably wondering what this weird noodle is. So this is in place of the factory positive crankcase ventilation system hose 
that would have run over in front of your engine and attached to the crossover pipe on your intake. So this is just routed to the intake pre-turbo, that way you're not pressurizing the crankcase, and this functions just like the stock one. Now, this can be trimmed, um, it's just silicone, just like the rest of the pipes that we've been dealing with. So if you want to trim it a little bit shorter to make it fit nicer, that's fine. I'm going to leave it long in this instance because we may go back and install a catch can here later on, which would also make this a little bit easier if it's longer to route to that catch can. So in this case, simply attach it onto the little breather on your valve cover, and that piece is good to go. No clamps are necessary. Also, we're ready to plug in our factory wiring harness again. So this is the wiring harness for the air box. Now for your intake system here, pre-turbo. This three pin connector here is for your mass airflow sensor. So we're just gonna route this down and plug it in. And then this other one, two pin, goes to your intake air temperature sensor that we just worked into the factory air box. This is an NB thing, NAs don't have to worry about this. But we're gonna go ahead and plug this in for this particular car. And then you're left with some extra harness here extra lengths of harness anyway. So you can pull this down out of the way. Um, you can zip tie it. You can, um, if you want to, you can even drill some holes in the back of your air box so that way you can use the factory pins and just clip it in place. Uh, that's really up to you. You're welcome to route it however you see fit just to keep it out of the way and make sure that it's not rubbing on anything. So I'll go ahead and tie this down here a little bit later. But now that we've got all of this in order, the next thing that we're gonna do is attach our blow-off valve recirculating hose. So in these kits, you're given a large length of three quarter inch heater hose, basically. And this doesn't have to be any kind of specific hose. This is simply routing from our blow-off valve back over here to this port on our intake tube. Along with our bypass hose are included some constant torque hose clamps. These hose clamps are simply just to attach this hose from the bypass valve over here to the intake and keep them clamped in place. So I'm going to attach the bypass valve side first since it's a little bit harder to reach. I'm going to slide one of these hose clamps into place first and then put the hose down into position. This is a pretty tight fit so you may want to use a little bit of hairspray or some rubbing alcohol to give you a helping hand. But once you've got that on there in position, then run your hose over here. You'll want to give yourself enough room to get around some of the components, but not so much that you're gonna have any issues hitting your pulleys or your belts, or you know rubbing up against anything really that's gonna cause you some problems. So you can see in this particular car, there's uh, quite a few things that we have to get around. So being the fans, the power steering, um, I'm going to pull it kind of to the point where I'm wrapping it just here underneath the fans. And then I'll wrap this up like so. And I'm going to trim it to fit right about there. And then of course slide your other hose clamp over this. And slide your hose onto the nipple. Alright. Now after you're happy with the orientation, make sure that there aren't any kinks. Um, you don't have to work too hard. This hose that when it does recirculate that boost pressure, um, as long as it's not a major kink, it'll work itself out without too much trouble. But once you've got the routing happy where you like it, go ahead and tighten up your hose clamps. And then um, also possibly what I'm going to do is add a few zip ties just to keep this hose from moving around and rub it against any other metal parts or up against any of the pulleys. That's it for this episode. We're done with the intercooler piping. Please hang out with us in the next episode where we're gonna be covering trimming the under tray and some of the plastic panels to be able to fit the new intercooler piping that we've just installed. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. You're also welcome to, of course, give us a call or send us an email if you need any help. We'll be happy to guide you through the process. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next time.